so we've been doing drafts on Underdog Fantasy all summer long, and a lot of you guys yell at me and say, hey, I draft on ESPN, or I draft on Yahoo, or I draft on NFL.com. Can you show us some love? So this video in particular is going to show love to y'all that draft on those platforms because there's differences. I can't sit here and acknowledge that there are not differences. I love Underdog Fantasy. It is, uh, I would say, high stakes league as far as drafts at this point in the summer are concerned. Now, every draft you do on Underdog has a minimum entry fee of $3. So you're paying to play. And obviously the winners get money. But with that, the ADPs are a lot sharper, I would say. And they become a little bit different strategically if you're drafting on the other platforms. So today what we did was I took a look at Underdog's ADP, your average draft position of every player within the first like 200-ish picks. And then I compiled NFL.com's ADP, Yahoo's ADP, ESPN ADP, and I smushed them together. And we got the average of the non-paying big content, big media platforms that we hate, all right? We hate big media. We hate these platforms. We hate drafting on these platforms, but a lot of you guys do it, and I don't hate you, so we're going to help y'all out today. We're going to look at the biggest discrepancies and tweak what I think your draft strategy should be based on these platforms as opposed to the high-stakes underdog-type platforms, all right? So with that being said, y'all know, know the rules by now. Let's tuck it. Flex it. And let's get it. So I'm going to throw the ADP that I compiled in a second on the board, but just overall themes and principles we're talking here. The biggest difference, because most of the formats that you guys play in tends to be start two running backs, two wide receivers, and either one or two flexes. On Underdog Fantasy, your starting lineup has three wide receivers. So you outnumber wide receivers, two running backs. Therefore, wide receivers are pushed drastically up the board. And some of you guys have never heard of Underdog Fantasy. They run these tournaments throughout the summer, and their big tournament is called Best Ball Mania. And basically, over the last couple of years, it's a tournament where like fucking 300,000 people enter. The winner takes home a, a few million dollars. This year, I think first place is $3 million, a, a $15 million total prize pool. And each year, they've done it. This is the fourth year now. They've looked back at the winning person's lineup. And they look at how they constructed their lineup, right? And that's where, where a lot of the whole like wide receiver heavy theory or push has really come to fruition and it's because a lot of the winners of the previous best ball mania years have gone really heavy on their wide receivers therefore everybody's kind of copying that mold now the normal fantasy player thinks and thrives through running backs so it makes sense that on the platforms like espn and nfl and yahoo running backs go really really early typical to wide receivers and i will say this year in general we don't really have like a consensus top running back a lot of people are like c-mac but we don't have like a clear clear workhorse guy like we had C-Mac a couple of years ago and the Todd Gurley's the year before that like when you have that 101 clear running back wide receiver he's in a tier of his own where this year it's pretty wide receiver heavy and we've seen this happen a few times in the history of fantasy football like after the 2015 season where Devonta Freeman was the RB1 and every running back had a terrible year uh, people wanted to draft wide receivers super heavy in the following year, and that ended up killing everybody. Anyone who had like David Johnson or anyone who had those guys the following year ended up winning their leagues, right? And that could be absolutely the case again for this year where everybody fades the running back position, goes wide receiver heavy early on. We're going Jefferson, we're going Chase, we're going Tyreek Hill, Cooper Cup, Stephon Diggs, A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb. In the first round, that's not something that we've really seen have precedent in fantasy football leagues in the last decade or so. Every time it happens, the following year, running backs crush and just fucking sweep away the opponents in your fantasy league. So we could be on the precipice of that happening, but I still want to back it up with some data, some statistics, and look at position by position where you should be attacking drafts. So here's the sheet I put together for you guys. Right here is the column of underdog ADP. Right here is the average of ESPN, NFL, and Yahoo. And right here is the difference between underdog and the other media platforms. So if it's green, if it's more green, that means the media platforms are higher than underdog and ADP. And you'll see a very quick common difference in that all the running backs are way higher than they are on underdog. So Eckler's going at 3-7 on ESPN, NFL, and Yahoo, where he's going 7th in underdog. Saquon Barkley's going 9-3, where he's going 16th on underdog. Josh Jacobs, 11 spots earlier. Najee Harris, 11 spots earlier. Travis Etienne, 13 spots earlier. You'll see a common 
theme between all the all the players that are green and all the players that are orange red. Now they're not as red just because some players all the way on the bottom is the way Excel works when you conditional format that bitch. These guys have monster gaps, which is skewing the color of the guys up here, but that's neither here nor there. You'll see the biggest differences in terms of, you know, orange or, you know, underdog having guys lower is clearly the wide receivers. So you have Alave going 19th overall, but 28th overall in ESPN, Yahoo, and NFL. Calvin Ridley, 14 spots higher in underdog. Keenan Allen, 11 spots higher. DJ Moore, 13 spots higher. Jerry Judy, 17. Christian Watson, 19. Mike Williams, 20. Drake London, 19. Brandon Ayuk, 19. Deontay Johnson, 16. Christian Kirk, 24. So what you'll see is a lot of the strategy that I've done up to this point that relates to underdog is grabbing your wide receivers early and often. Now, I still think the single best way to prepare for your draft, so you actually know like the difference between the guys going on underdog and the guys going later on these main platforms is usually because the rest of the public is not really caught up to it. They're not as sharp. The guys who are paying money to draft in April, May, June, July, August are staying on top of football news and then staying on top of like snap counts and routes run and who's playing where on what depth chart, which is why I could not, I could not emphasize enough. Even if your main league is on one of these other platforms, drafting on underdog starts to give you muscle memory of where these guys should be going. So by the time you get onto ESPN, Yahoo, whatever, like you are so ready to attack your draft and you realize like this guy shouldn't be going down this low. This is when I need to pull the trigger on him. So if you get onto underdog fantasy, like go attack a few fast drafts. You can do $3 into a fast draft. They're always starting like every fucking 10 seconds, they start a new one. And if you're depositing $10 or more for the very first time, you can download the, the app. The link is the first one in the description, the notes of this video and you use our code BDGE when you deposit 10, they're going to double whatever you put down there. So you'll have 20 and you can do six drafts, six drafts over the next couple of days before your real draft happens. But in your real draft, if you are going on one of these platforms, you'll see the smart move would be to go running back early. The smart move would be to start with a guy like Eckler or a guy like Saquon or a guy like Bijan because you're not going to be able to get them later in the round, right? In underdog, you might have a Josh Jacobs or a Jonathan Taylor or Tony Pollard or one of these, you know, RB1s fall to you in the late second, early third round. That just won't happen in normal standard leagues. But you'll be able to get these elite wide receivers who, you know, you see CeeDee Lamb, you see Devontae Adams, you see Amon Ra, Garrett Wilson go at the one-two turn in a lot of underdog drafts when that will never really be the case in your home leagues. Everybody wants those running backs. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them unless if you're in a home league that is on Yahoo or ESPN or NFL – and you start three wide receivers and it's full PPR, you should be hammering these these late wide receivers, man. I don't I don't care that the running backs are going earlier. That's just more value for you. I would love to start off. If it's a three wide receiver league and you're full PPR, give me fucking Stefan Diggs and Amon Ross St. Brown and Jalen Waddle. Like I would love that start. But if you're half PPR and you're only starting two wide receivers, it is probably smart to go with the flow here and grab a running back. Grab one running back early, at least, right? Get get an anchor running back. And then you can grab your RB2 a little bit later on in the fifth or sixth round. So just to start off, the overall theme here, the biggest difference by far and away is the fact that running backs just go so much earlier in these main media platform leagues. We hate big media and we hate drafting running backs early, but you're going to have to do it against your friends because they're all doing it and you will miss out on a lot of the best players if you don't go with the flow at least a little bit. So when we start to venture off into other positions, let's see like how the quarterback ADP differs. This is kind of great because typically in like home leagues, you see um, quarterbacks go way higher than they should, right? People are taking like the big name players, the Mahomes is the Hurts, the Allens way earlier than they should. However, now people in underdog and people just in the, in the community and, and doing fantasy drafts this early have come around to the fact that these guys are such a positional advantage that they've actually met up with the ADP of where these guys are going. So you can see there's not a big difference between Mahomes in underdog and Mahomes on ESPN or Yahoo. There's almost no difference between these guys, which is kind of cool. Mahomes is a one spot difference. Hertz and Allen are two spot differences. Lamar too. Joe Burrow is a five spot difference. Fields, Herbert, Lawrence, they're all within like three spots. But you can see the dip off here. When you get past the Herbert Lawrence tier. You see a drop off in Watson, Dak, Aaron Rodgers, Daniel Jones. These guys are going a lot earlier in home league. So that would mean if you believe that you're okay with one of these guys, right? That that tier of Watson, Prescott, Tua, Aaron Rodgers, like you don't end up getting one of these top guys and you want to get one of these dudes, you can't really sit on it. You cannot wait till the ninth, 10th, 11th round like you could on underdog. You'll have to use your sixth, seventh, eighth round pick on one of these guys if you like them. But I suggest the same strategy I had on underdog drafts where you're getting one of these elite QBs. 
I still think that that's the move regardless of what league type you're in. So get your QB early and often. There's no real difference between them on underdog and ESPN Yahoo. Third round for Mahomes, Hurts, Allen. Love that. Fourth round for Fields or Jackson, Burrow. Fourth, fifth round. I'm cool with all those. Tight ends. There is clearly a massive difference here, which is interesting because like they underrate wide receivers and pass catchers. But ESPN, Yahoo, NFL massive difference in where the tight end market is. So Kelsey and Andrews are going around the same spot as they are an underdog. Seven for Kelsey, 30th for Mark Andrews. But as soon as you hit Hawkinson, as soon as you hit tight end three, Hawkinson's being drafted 10 spots above underdog, 12 spots for Kittle, nine spots for Waller, 15 spots for Goddard, 13 for Kyle Pitts, 20 for Evan Ingram, 21 for Njoku. So where I think you could take advantage of a lot of these types of platforms are the late round tight ends that the people that play on these platforms for the most part are not really keeping like too up to date on what happens in preseason. They're kind of just like getting onto the platform and doing their drafts. So I think, and this works with almost all positions. It's why keeping up with the preseason and understanding who's going to be the starter in most spots is so advantageous to you. So if you're watching this now, yesterday I did a full recap of every single week two preseason game. Really highly suggest you watch it because what's going to happen is like you could pay up 20 spots for Evan Ingram, but dudes like Jake Ferguson dudes like Luke Musgrave, those dudes who are going really late in drafts are going to be like the best value picks on these platforms because no one that really pays attention to fantasy that plays on these platforms is grabbing them early. So you can take these tight ends early. Like I love Goddard. Waller's growing on me a little bit after their last game, but I don't know if I want to use a six round pick on Kyle Pitts. That's almost a fifth round pick. Evan Ingram, I don't want to use a six round pick on him. I would rather use a 10th, 11th, 12th round pick on Jake Ferguson or Luke Musgrave. So I would let these tight ends get pushed up earlier and earlier in these main platforms. If you can't grab a Goddard in the 6th or 7th, if you can't grab Waller in the 6th or 7th or Kittle in the 6th or 7th, then I'm probably staying off of those mid-tier tight ends. And when we move to the wide receiver position, again, you just see a lot of yellow and a lot of red. A lot of yellow, a lot of red. A lot of stop signs going on here. No more speeding through these because they all drop. They all drop. So you can wait on wide receivers on the main platforms, but you cannot do that on underdog. And I echo to you, y'all. I echo to you. The single best way to prep for your drafts is one, get on underdog. But two, if you get on underdog and you use our promo code BDGE, not only are they going to double whatever you put down and we're doing pick them slips all season long, you actually get our draft guide, which has our rankings absolutely free. And these are not all wide receiver heavy. These rankings are not for underdog specifically. Like I have four running backs in the top eight picks. So these are very much like season-long family, friends, league, friendly rankings for one QB, for super flex. I have the positional rankings, all my must-draft players, draft strategy, sheesh like that. So if you go to Underdog Fantasy and you deposit with promo code BDGE, $10 or more, they're going to double it, and you'll get our draft guide emailed to you absolutely free. But the overall takeaway here is that you can wait on wide receiver. You can. You can definitely wait on wide receiver in your friends and family league where you're using the 19th pick on Amara St. Brown, but he's a third round pick, or you're using the 13th pick on Amara St. Brown, but he's a 19th pick in friend and family league. Ridley is another one who's gotten so much steam on underdog, but he's going 38th overall. 38th overall is a fourth round pick. Calvin Ridley right now is a second round pick on underdog. So he's a guy that you can wait on, but you can look at any of these dudes and see, you know what I'm going to do? Actually, I just, you know, I just thought of it right now. I'm going to make this Excel sheet downloadable for you guys, okay? So I'm going to link down below. I'm going to make a landing page, a one-page part of our website where you just put your email in and I'll email it out to you guys for free, all right? I'm just going to do that for you all. So you'll have the UD column. I will unhide ESPN, NFL, Yahoo, so you'll be able to actually see the difference between the two. Um, that'll be down below. So if you want to get this data so that you can kind of manipulate it and fuck around and see where the best value points are, like where the most red are, and you can kind of adjust accordingly to yourselves. We'll do that for you. All right. So probably going to wrap up the video there. I know it wasn't like too in depth, but I wanted to get the main points and principles over to you guys. So you would have a better draft on those platforms. And I swear the best way to have the best draft is to prepare against other people who are throwing money on the line. And you could only do that on underdog fantasy, very low stakes, but very high rewards for you guys. They also got their own BDGE Superflex tournament launching this upcoming Thursday that you guys can compete against us in. All right. So hit underdog, use promo code BDGE, 100% match, free draft guide. I love you guys. Happy drafting this weekend if you are getting after it.